All right, this is going to be an overview of Northvale. Northvale is an 18 card expansion to Dragons of Etchingstone. It comes in this 36 card hook box so that you can store the base game with your expansion cards. So, what do you get in Northvale? You get four mages that you can play as, each with their own four special cards that you swap into the base deck, and you get a new region card as well as a new boss card with four new bosses. So let's go into a little bit more detail. I want to show you the mages. First one is Voltak. You can tell which mage it is based on their icon there. And they swap in these cards for specific cards in the base deck. So you're still playing with a 16 card action deck. It's just four of your cards are going to belong to your mage. Voltac is, um, so each of these mages has a, a specific play style and they roughly correlate to one of the four colors, which is sort of one of the schools of thought on how to handle ether in um, the world of Etch and Stone. And Voltac kind of, <laughs> he does not lean into the ether part of uh, the game. He is more concerned about just straight up dealing damage or um, generating movement. And you can see that because Two of his cards are colorless. They have black backgrounds and they can't be used to activate either actions. And he's also bad at initiative. But he makes up for it with uh, these two cards here. They give you a boost to your leader action based on the position they're in. So uh, if this card is the, used as the element, you get plus two to your leader action. And if, if this card is used as the unused card, you get plus one. And as you upgrade these cards, that benefit increases as well. And also, many of the values are tweaked a little bit uh, as well, and that's not going to be as easy to see at first glance. But if you're familiar with the base game, you'll see the tweaks made to the cards. And you'll notice each mage has good and bad things uh, because they, they are designed to be roughly as challenging to win with as if you were just going to play with the standard base deck. So each mage has its advantages and disadvantages. They just kind of ramp up the complexity and the puzzle. So Voltac is actually probably the least complex mage to play as, and Promethea, our red mage here, is one of the more complex to um, play with. Part of that is Illumined Path and Contingency Plan here. So Based on what the unused card is when this card is in your hand, uh, you're going to get some benefit or another, and that may benefit you or not, depending on what type of encounter you're facing and what you need at the time. And then this is kind of the opposite. Uh, whatever the ether action color of your booster is, you're going to get some negative effect. So Promethea is not the best at movement, but she really excels at attack. This is a cool card, um, her Berserker card is uh, she can convert some damage that she takes into XP. So there might be some situations where you're actually going out of your way to take damage. And then this card, um, based on what the unused card is and based on the position of this card, you might get either a penalty to your movement value or uh, a boon to your attack value. So kind of complex to pilot, but she can be a fun character. Next is maybe my favorite character. This is Mythix. Mythix is, I think in the rule book, I talk about him as the opposite of Voltak. He's, uh, he goes out of his way to be flashy and he, the, one of the easier things to notice about him is he's good with elements. Uh, and so like these two cards, as you upgrade them, you get flexibility with the background color. So you can see these are multicolored backgrounds. By the time you get them to level four, uh, each of these has three different colors, and so very useful for flexibility in powering up your ether actions. This is a cool card, uh, maybe my favorite card in the game. When you use this as your leader and you power it up to get that ether action, you don't actually play this card, you play the ether value of the unused card, but you get to add a little bit to it. And as you upgrade these cards, those values tend to get better. Uh, he has some negatives. This is very challenging. Two of his cards have Pursuers present, so when a Pursuer is in your hand, um, it makes both Journey and um, 
enemy encounters a little more challenging. He's also not great with boosters. Here he has a split ether action. So if it's yellow, you're doing pretty well. If you accidentally have a gray element, uh, you're going to do even worse than the basic action. And then Windwalker is another cool card. <clears throat> when this card is in the proper position, you have the option to face either the encounter left or encounter right of the one that you're supposed to be facing. So a little bit of flexibility there. <clears throat> and then our last mage is... Noramir. Noramir is very unique in that he has two units uh, that he that follow him around. So if these unfortunately get down to level one, those units leave him. But from level two on up, he has units and they continue to get stronger as he levels up these cards. Units, um, they don't work for free. You have to commit to paying them a fee in XP to, to get... Uh, that, like this one specializes in move or initiative and this one specializes in attack or shield uh, you have to pay them a certain amount of xp based on what position uh, the unit was in your hand during that turn and uh, if you can't pay that xp you actually have to pay it in damage taken so uh, kind of a i think it's really interesting to play with these units uh, in in the deck and then he has uh a weird flip-flop here on these two cards where the basic action is actually more powerful than the boosted action but the boosted action uh, is two of the four colors rather than just one so you have a chance of um, of you have to try to avoid that if this is going to be your leader card as well if this card is the unused card you're going to end up getting some negatives to your booster okay the regions this is a progression from kind of the coast uh, with these types of enemies here to this is sort of just the plains uh, with rapidly ramping difficulty with the uh, with the enemies and the journeys as well so you'll notice a ton of new uh, icons or um, enemy and journey abilities to contend with. I, I think probably more than double what the base game has. Some of the more interesting ones I think are uh, what is this? Adapt or no? Evasive. Uh, and this adds shield to the enemy for every initiative you are short. So stuff like that. Um, also aggressive and defensive just affects the um, initiative, uh, initial damage of the enemy, so that the initial damage and the combat damage are um, different values, and that can add a little bit to the decision making. Then you make it to the Forgotten Foothills in level 3. Try to work on my camera focus here, there we go. Uh, there's a new summon ability, Fortified is a cool ability uh, that actually adds shield against your initiative unless you do certain actions. Uh, and then finally you proceed to Northvale and take on the elementals, which are kind of crazy in the combination of abilities that they have. This one has Pierce. Uh, this one has Adaptable and Evasive. Really trying to work on my camera focus here. I apologize for that. And uh, yeah, so this one generates new shield colors as well as generating additional shield. We'll talk through the bosses quick. This is Marinus, and you'll notice the bosses now have abilities as well. This is the Waykeeper. He is going to really punish you for not achieving initiative. This is the Blight Rider. It has poison, which is additional damage you have to take after you already take all of your combat damage. And then we have Aqualus. Aqualus is sort of uh, attempted to make him the most difficult boss, and he has a little bit more lore and backstory, and uh, he is challenging with his fortified ability here. So thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you check out the game.